So this has been a rather uh, difficult bachelor week for I think Bachelor Nation. If you guys follow me um, on Instagram, you've seen my Instagram live and uh, you know I was a little bit uh, lit and not lit like this, but just pissed off because I just felt that Becca, in my opinion, didn't deserve that. You know what I mean? I felt like she was just abused this whole season. And I just, I don't know. I, I talked about it in my life. I just didn't like how they were coming for her. I didn't like the whole filming of it. And I don't care what the hell Ari says about, you know, I filmed that because I wanted her to be the next Bachelorette. Dude, it was in poor taste all around. So I don't care what your intentions were. It was still hard. Having said that, I've calmed down since and you guys have been reaching out to me, giving me so much tea and I totally appreciate it. You guys reach out to me on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. I love it. Y'all give me the tea on what's going on and I do appreciate it because like I said before, I started watching The Bachelorette with Trista. I fell off because it just, I didn't feel like it was interesting to me at that time. Um, also, same thing with The Bachelor. I was in and out, so I just really don't know um, a lot about these people. So you guys, uh, the official Bachelor Nation, you guys are really into it and like just up on everything. And I just appreciate you guys giving me information to help me really just make um, a responsible yet comedic opinion. Anyway, I've had some time to calm down and I've, uh, I've got some information from you guys. I've also been able to rewatch a few of the episodes. And with that said, I have some final thoughts on the Bachelor finale. Let's discuss. So I don't know about you guys, but I was hyperventilating when Chris Harrison was doing his whole intro. I was like, girl, shut up. Let's just get to it because I know you about to snatch my wig. Let's just go. Like I couldn't wait. To be honest with you, the Chris Harrison interludes, I think we're, we, we need to cut those. Like we're done. I don't, I, for me, it doesn't help the show in any way. After every scene, we cut to Chris Harrison and then he's talking to the audience and making some commentary. And I'm like, I don't think we need that. You know what I mean? And not trying to get nobody out of a job, but I just feel like I would like him more just doing like an interview all the way through instead of showing us stuff and then breaking it up. Why don't you let us watch the show and then come back and do an interview the next day? I don't know. For me, the breaking it up was just too much. No shade to the makeup artist because the makeup is difficult. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sitting here, a grown woman trying to teach myself and it's taking a while, okay? No shade to the makeup gurus on this show. However, I got to come at whoever is giving out these lashes. Because for one, Becca looks like Snuffleupagus and Lauren looks like she just went to a DIY craft makeup day and just made these lashes. They look a mess. So Lauren meets the family. Dry. Snooze fest. It's like watching paint dry. We didn't. It can't be just me because when Ari asked Becca how her head was, I had like a flashback to Drag Race and I was just like, <laughs> no complaints. Ari is a damn lie. When was Lauren dancing or doing all these comedic bits that he was talking about to try to make her interesting? He is attracted to her. That is it. Ari's penis wants Lauren, nothing else. I felt like he was just lying about all of these good qualities and traits that she had that were so beautiful that the cameras didn't catch or whatever. Trying to like sell her to his family when the family is just like, we know a heifer when we see it. Becca is the right choice. Bottom line, Ari wants a woman that he can lead unchecked. Becca is not that woman. So he picked the woman that he could lead around and she won't say a damn thing. Did Ari dye his hair before the finale because he looked about eight years younger and I was just like, did homeboy go and get the Just For Men box dye? I wouldn't put it past him. He'll do anything to appeal to those college girls. Yeah, I said it. Um, Becca and Ari's date in Peru. Um, just a question. Were they drinking out of blenders? Why were their cups so huge? Then we get to this part in the finale that bothered me the most. It's because Becca is showing Ari this memory book, right? And I feel like concerning what has happened, he had ample time to get out. You know, I felt like the memory book was it, especially the poem about her father who has passed. That was the time to get out. And then like, I felt like all of his I love you's to her were obligatory. And I'm not gonna put this on age. I'm not, I think, and this is the only time I'm ever really gonna not come for Becca, but kind of read her in a bit because honey, you have to, you got to read these clues. You know what I mean? Um, you got to get wiser with these decisions because there's something in her that makes her, or maybe it's a past or something that has happened that makes her pick awful men. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that she's a magnet for awful men, but I think that there's something within Becca that is not 
that is kind of off with noticing problematic behavior because Ross and Ari are not a coincidence. There is something about her where she tries to, and maybe it's a typical thing that women do when we try to fix a man. I feel, I feel like, like she looks past the flaws and looks past red flags because she has this idea of her future. Because even she says it at the end of this finale, she says to Ari, I feel like my future was snatched away from me. And to me, that's... That's not quite healthy because I get we fantasize or whatever, but I feel like this fantasy that she made in her mind concerning her and Ari, she was standing on it and she was going full speed ahead and not seeing obvious issues with Ari, you know, wanting to contact Lauren again. And just, you know, a lot of clues that were there that I as a viewer could see. And I'm just like, honey, I can see it through the TV screen. You're sitting there hugged up with this guy, looking him in his face and you don't notice that. So I don't know. I'm not coming for her, but I'm just like, girl, you got to get wise. You got to get wise. You got to get hip to this game because these men will continue to do this to you because they feel like you will always be an easy target. Somebody they can manipulate, somebody they can take advantage of. Not like Lauren, but that they can manipulate and take advantage of you in a way where they tell you what you want to hear and tell you about a secure future and lead you on with that and you fall for that because you just want this. You have this idea of what your future is going to be and any man that says exactly what it is that you desire, you'll fall for that instead of seeing that what he's saying is not matching up to his behavior. So you got to get wise with that, mind, especially if you're going to spend some time out here in Los Angeles. LA is full of snakes like that. So you got to wisen up, sis. Wisen up. Not Team Lauren. However, this finale dress that she had on, let me tell you something, it fit her perfectly. Her body like was, it, that that dress was hitting every curve that she barely had, but it made it look good. And that is what a dress is supposed to do. It's supposed to enha enhance what little you got and your best assets. And it did. She looked great. And when she walked out and the way it swayed, I was like, ooh, let me get that in a plus size. Because <laughs> mother is thick. Ari obviously sends Lauren home. And I'm not going to come for her in that sense because he let her on. He made her believe that she was going to be the one that he was going to pick. And so she was kind of confused by what was going on, right? However, my issue with her was the shade that she was throwing at Beckett in the car. You know what I mean? Like when she was saying that Ari chose the easy route. Like you don't have to, you don't have to come at Becca because you're upset about something that you thought that you had. Now I get being mad at Ari, but Lauren's not that girl. I told you before, she is not that girl. However, I can't rock with her coming after Becca because that was his choice. He made his choice. And I don't think that Becca is easy, which is why he went back to you. Okay, honey, you're the easy road. Becca is a challenge that is gonna make him a better man, but he don't want that. He wants to be unchecked and he wants to do whatever he want to hang out in the streets you know bang children <laughs> let me stop but you know what I mean do whatever he wants and then come back to you and you'll accept it because as long as you have a roof over your head and a nice purse you good you that chick you that chick now we're going to get into the rest of the show where they just do Becca dirty they did her dirty with Ross but now she's going to continue to get dragged it starts off with her dress Lauren had a freaking Oscar gown Becca is wearing a dress straight off of David's bridal clearance section. Like, I couldn't believe that that's what they chose for her. The freaking um, mesh or whatever that was that was holding it together didn't even match her skin tone. It was sticking up the whole time. Her hair was pushed to the side poorly. Like, they just did not know what to do with her and her look. Like, the eyeshadow wasn't matching the dress. Like, everything was just off. And I was just like, although I knew that she was going to be Ari's pick, I felt bad because she just didn't look like a winner. And now it all makes sense. And I feel like they all knew that. So they kind of set her up for this like underdog come up or whatever that they're going to do later in the season. But I just didn't like it. She did not look like a winner. Lauren looked like a winner. She got sent home. And that to me said a lot. Ari picks Becca and everything is happy in paradise or Peru, at least for a moment, because the show is not done dragging Becca through the mud because after Ari picks her, they go to their, you know, separate wherever living spaces or whatever. After they spend some time together, the show brings her back, lures her back to LA, telling her that they're going to do a happy couples interview. She's talking about the ring, how much she loves Ari. And then you get like this split screen of Ari pacing or getting ready to dump her. So they lured her here knowing that she was going to get dumped on national TV. And come to find out, Ari had a choice on whether or not he wanted to film the breakup or not. It was not production, it was Ari. And Ari said he chose to film 
him dumping his fiance on national TV because it could set her up to be the bachelorette. No, he did not. You are gross. You are gross. You are selfish. You wanted to humiliate that girl. You did all of that so that Lauren can see that you were really into her because she's so conniving that she probably needed you or told you to do something like that so that the world could know that she was the one that you wanted. Because this whole facade of, oh, I did that so that she could be the bachelorette. I was thinking about her. is not your MO. You don't think about nobody but yourself. And Crystal called they it. edited her like she was a nut and we got missed led but she was the one who saw you for who you really are. alabaster demon so this um alabaster demon sits becca down and he begins to and i felt like also ari dumping her in front of the cameras i felt like it was also a way for him to like show that she knew that this was coming did you guys feel that i i felt that because he kept on saying well i told you this and i told you that and she was just like but you still proposed i don't care what you said is what you did like i was going off of your actions yes you said you wanted to reach out i thought it made sense because becca is a nice person you know what i mean like even throughout this whole thing she was still thinking of lauren who was never thinking of her who was speaking with her fiance and giving him all kinds of notes and tips in a way to get you out of the picture so it's very unfortunate because becca is such a sweetheart but anyway he's he's saying all of this stuff to make it seem like she kind of knew that this was coming and when he finally breaks her heart she tells him to leave he won't leave like he keeps on walking in and out and all around and first of all what was the layout of this house like I, this home looked like a hallway with a lot of windows like he kept on walking around in different directions and I was like where's the kitchen where's the bathroom I don't know what that layout was I don't know if the um, architect was on acid but the way they filmed the, the layout of this home it looked like a crazy not a madhouse but um a house of mirrors it was just so weird he kept on walking and i felt like he was walking into illusions it was weird because i'm i'm trying to be mad at ari and i'm like where is he going is it the, is it the kitchen now is it the bedroom like where is it because i can't i can't keep up i think it's also poor editing the editing was just all over the place and i guess they wanted to do that to make it you know raw and you know we didn't need it to be raw we didn't need it to be be unedited we did not need to see this woman be humiliated it was cringeworthy it made me very uncomfortable and I felt bad for Becca I really really did because she gave so much of herself and to be treated like this was so uncalled for sleep with the girl multiple times you travel the world with her you spend holidays with her all the time you're still talking to another girl that you cut in the show and then like right before, because I found this out in her people interview that Ari cut his phone, not cut his phone off, but he, I guess he blocked her number so she couldn't reach him. And so she didn't know what was going on because she said they were talking every day up until the day before he dumped her. Like it's, there's just a way to go about it. Like Ari didn't have to propose. I wouldn't have expected that from somebody who was still caught. I felt like if he said that I can't make the decision because I'm in love with two women, I felt like that would have been a better ratings grab um, than, than humiliating Becca, than um, making himself and Lauren villains. I just felt like there was such, there were so many ways he could have gone about this. And it was, I don't know, it was, it was just in poor taste. I couldn't rock with it. I did not like that he was trying to absolve himself of any fault. I didn't like how he stayed there because he wanted her to say that it was okay. That's what I felt like he was doing. I felt like when she kept on telling him to leave and he stayed there, I felt like he was staying there so that she could finally say, no, it's okay. It's fine that you dumped me and you know emotionally cheated on me with Lauren. It's okay. But she wouldn't give him that because she was so heartbroken. And I just, uh, I feel bad for that girl. And you know what? Since we're here, let's talk about after the final rose. First of all, I don't know how active you guys are on Twitter, but uh, JoJo was lighting up Twitter. She was just giving so much tea on how the process works behind the scenes. One of the things that she did say, and the way she said it, I couldn't rock with it. She said that um, Bachelor never films the couples right after the proposal. Like she says that they propose or whatever, and then you go home and you go your separate ways or you go together, whatever. But then you just have some time to live in solitude. Then she said that it should have been a red flag for Becca that 
you know, she was getting, that they were filming their relationship right after with like these mini home videos, but it was clearly filmed by somebody else. And I guess uh, Becca and Ari were traveling and they were traveling with maybe a producer and somebody was, you know, just taking videos of them and like compiling it and keeping it together. And she said that that should have been a red flag for Becca. And I'm, and I can understand that because I talked about how she has to wisen up, but I feel like, you know, she had one boyfriend that she was with him for seven years. Now she's in this whole whirlwind with Ari. Give the girl some time to learn. You know what I mean? I feel like after this, she'll start wising up and get a little bit better. But to put that on her when it was Ari who was the one who took back uh, the engagement, I don't know. I just felt like I, I get it. Like I even said it uh, previously that she needs to wisen up a bit. But for somebody like Jojo who has been there, I would have thought that she would have had Becca's back a bit more. That's all. So now after the final rose, the show continues to drag Becca because after Ari breaks her heart, he hops in a car and he drives away emotionless. Like he was not phased by any of this at all, which lets me know that he had been planning this for a very long time. Like this is not something that he just came to think about within the you know the last month of them actually being engaged Arby was doing some mess way before then and I feel like even when he proposed he was already thinking of ways to get out of it so anyway he rides in a car emotional emotionless and then the show puts Becca on the plane they got this girl riding coach and she's in the middle seat. I'm like, the least y'all could do. You just humiliated her. The least you could do is get her first class. But if you're going to let a fly coach, give her a window seat. Not the middle seat. Another thing that I didn't like, and they kept on using him throughout this episode. The whole Jason Mesnick stuff. I, uh, listen, this isn't Jason's season. I'm sick of him. Stop bringing him up to soften the blow of Ari. Because yes, Jason changed his mind. However, he chose to not film the breakup. He chose to tell her separately so that she can come prepare. He chose to sit there in the hot seat while she dragged him. Which was the right thing to do because he misled someone. I get that it's a very tough decision to make, but you are a grown man. You didn't have to make a decision at all. You could have said, I can't make this right now. And there have been bachelors that have done that. So the fact that he's going, you know, he's conflicted and he's hurt and, you know, he's going to Jason for um, sympathy and understanding. Stop it. We don't care. We saw his actions. We have made our own decision about Ari. Let's move on from this. He is still a what? Say it with me, ladies and gentlemen. Alabaster Demon. Here is the part that pissed me off the most in this episode. Ari goes back to Lauren. He gives this whole little, you know, confessional about how he doesn't know if she'll take him back. He's scared and confused. Then he gives this Oscar winning performance on her porch where he's having like a panic attack. Oh, oh, I'm scared. Like in front of her door. Like, <laughs> okay, you mean to tell me that she couldn't see the camera crew and then you acting a damn fool in front of her porch? Like she couldn't see that? Really? So he's acted all kinds of crazy because he's scared and he doesn't know how she'll react. As soon as she opens the door, what does she do? She jumps in his arms. Why? Because they've been communicating the whole time. Let me tell you something. If Ari would have cut Lauren, right? Let, let's just let's just follow this logic of how they tried to edit it. He cut her, sent her on Peru, never talked to her since then. Then he goes, um, you know, dumps Becca, then runs to her place and he's just hoping that she'll take him back because, you know, of how he left her in Peru. That were true. She would have been shocked. She probably would have opened the door. How Becca looked at that abuser Roth, because that's what he is, I'm telling you. When that girl looked at that man, there was fear in her eyes. I stand by it. She is a class act, so she never exposed him for what he is, but that woman was afraid of that boy. Anyway, she would have looked at him and been like shocked, scared, confused, probably stared at him for a second, then closed the door, then opened it again and probably punched him in the face because she realized that she was led on by this dude who never really had any intentions to do anything with either one of them but have sex and feel like the man on this show. But no, she jumps in his arms and that lets me know that they've been communicating the whole time. And another reason why I believe that is because he was trying, they were trying to have this conversation like it was the first time they ever spoke, but she kept on stuttering on things. He kept on going around certain things like it was their 
stories were never matching, which let me know that they were trying to play us. They are both grimy. Lauren is not innocent and Ari is not innocent. They have been talking since Ari and Becca left Peru. This has been in the works. Ari did not just think about this. This was weighing heavy on him. I'll give him that. But you shouldn't, you shouldn't have slept with the girl. You should not have traveled to all these different destinations. You wanted a free trip and some free coochie. So you got what you could get. And then when you realize that you didn't want to pursue this relationship any longer, you dumped her so you can go back to the other chick. Because when you're done with Lauren, you're going to try to get baby. But Becca. you know, baby Becca is done with you. So you're going to try to get some other desperate heifer in this franchise because you are that dude. He is that dude, y'all. He is so grimy and I'm so mad at production because they did not vet him properly because all this stuff is coming out about him. One, TT exposed him for reaching out to Lauren on New Year's Eve. Two, baby Becca um, exposed him for trying to get in her DMs or like being all creepy and weird and old guy in her DMs. But every woman reading them DMs and dude knew what was going on. He was trying to, you know, like feel her out to see if he could still see her because that's the kind of dude he is. But let me go back to the whole TT and Lauren and New Year's Eve and are we reaching out I don't personally feel like that was the first time he reached out I feel like that was a stunt that Lauren was pulling to make TT think that this is the first time they ever spoke I feel like that was a setup so TT could take that back because we know that our TT is messy and I don't feel like that was the first time they spoke but they set up TT so that she could be the one because they know that she is the one that blabs the most so they set this whole thing up so it could be like oh New Year's Eve was when he first reached out to her please they have been talking way before then. Now the women from the season are back on the show and I didn't like this part because I felt like they were using the the women to okay the behavior of the show because Chris Harrison the whole time kept on talking about how he was attacked and playing victim and you know how the show was being attacked or whatever so he has the women on the stage and he immediately goes to Kendall who I at first was pissed with but I realized that once she was probably caught off guard or maybe she was just doing what she could to secure her um spot in Bachelor Nation at some point, especially in Paradise. But he looks at Kendall, he's like, Kendall, do you think we did anything wrong? Like that wasn't something that was rehearsed. It just seemed very rehearsed. It seemed very fake. And I was really upset because he was using the women to say things that would, in, that would simply ease the viewers um, anger and just make them be okay with how they did Becca. And I just didn't think it was right. I honestly feel like they should just apologize and let's move forward. It is what it is. You made a huge mistake. Own up to it. Stop playing victim. Stop trying to use these women in the Bachelor Nation to okay poor choices that were made at the sake of Becca's heart. And then we get to Carolyn. I'm telling you, that girl mustered up every tear she could find in that body. And I'm just like, Carolyn, I don't know what she's auditioning for. I don't know if it's Paradise, if it's Winter Games, if it's The Bachelorette. I feel like Carolyn is auditioning for anything. She will be the receptionist at ABC. Carolyn just wants a gig, okay? She is doing the most. And like every time we see her on camera, she is coming after Ari or just, these women were called up. I'll see you next Tuesday. Uh, like she, she just does the most for me. And I'm like, please, somebody in Bachelor Nation give this girl a job because she needs it. Mother is putting in work. Then they bring out this Jason guy again. Like, stop it. Ari messed up. It is what it is. Like, stop trying. I, th I feel like they keep on messing up because they are trying to get sympathy instead of just owning it and moving forward while you still have fans stop trying to defend Ari and his poor decisions like that was the thing that kept on pissing me off it's just like you keep on bringing Jason here so we can understand Lori's side um Ari's side we don't want oh my goodness I call them Lori do you think they're going to name their first child Lori because it's a mixture of Lauren and up uh, I don't even want to talk about these people too much because I'm so pissed off but I do want to say two things one, when Lauren, it, when Lauren came out with Ari or when they brought Lauren out, did you see how she was like kind of talking about Becca? And that's what bothers me about her because when Chris Harrison asked her if they were friends, she was like, um, um, um uh, like, are you kidding me? Y'all were all so close in that house to now try to act like you guys weren't friends. So it will look, so you won't look as guilty. I was just like, you are such a vindictive Heffa, you knew what you were doing the whole time. First of all, let me digress for a second. There is somebody on uh, Instagram, and I think, I don't know who sent it to me. Let me, I can't find it. But, um, and I, I'll 
when I find it, I'll put your Instagram down here because I love the tea that you guys are sending me. This person sent me um, <laughs> the Instagram of one of Lauren's ex fiance's friends who was dragging Lauren and saying basically what we all realize at this point that she's very manipulative and plays the game. Like she wanted to win Ari, she won him. My thing is you don't have to win it by throwing another woman under the bus. And I just don't like how she was making these little shady comments about Lauren, about um, Becca, and then to act like they weren't friends because if she does admit that they're friends, it'll look grimy on her part. We already know, girl. Just say y'all were cool, but then you got with Ari and it was just like, we're done. We know it's an odd and difficult situation, so nobody will drag you for that. Just own up to your mess and move forward. That's the thing. There's not any ownership on this side of the table. You know what I mean? Like Becca is even owning up things and apologizing for things and blaming herself for everything. And she was the one who was dragged through the mud. Ari, Lauren, Chris, this show, nobody is taking responsibility and they were all the ones who set this girl up to be humiliated. Wow. This proposal, I was beyond disgusted. Like Becca's essence and warmth from her behind was still on that couch when Ari proposed to Lauren and then he gets up and he's just like I want to make sure that I do this in front of the world and this audience why do you have to do that who cares you picked her move forward like Becca had just left the stage and he decides that he wants to propose to Lauren the people in the audience were so confused like one person clapped everybody else was like um I, like this is uncomfortable I was I'm just this was such a terrible bachelor pick I hope they've learned that they need to listen to the fans when we ask for something, give it to us. We know what we're talking about. Moving on from that demonic alabaster couple, let's get into Becca, who is our new bachelorette. I'm not yet excited about it. I love Becca as a person. She's just boring to watch for, for me. Like in my opinion, I just don't know if she can hold a whole season. So I think that she's going to be, sad to say it, the male equivalent of Arby, like somebody who... Um, is not that interesting, but we're going to have to get like really interesting bachelors, which she actually did get. Because after she's announced, we get like this line, of, I think about four or five bachelors that will be on the show. And I honestly think, I'm telling you guys, I think I'm right. I think CN had it in the bag. Here is why. The men that came out to me, I do not think for one second that casting would have picked so many black men for Becca. Two black men that we saw, but then I think there were about two black men, I think three white guys, but that was still a large number for some for a bachelorette who was white. Let's be real. And I just was just like, I don't know. I felt like these men were for CN, especially that first guy. And then Darius, he does not seem like the kind of guy that goes out with white women. <laughs> That first one do, but not Darius. So I was just like, I don't know if if these are CN's guys. They probably are. So I feel like because they had cast the men already, they were just like, you know what? Let's just give it to Becca because the viewers hate us at this point and we need to make this... Um, this comeback kind of story arc with her so that we can get back into the good graces of the viewers. But I don't, I don't know if it'll work. I really don't know. But from the guys, I feel like her season is going to be interesting because we have a lot of interesting men. And I also think we have, we're going to have a lot of uh, culturally diverse men because these are the men that they picked for CN. I don't see any kind of jocks or anything like that. And that seems to be uh, what she goes for aside from Ari. But I feel like that's the type of men that she goes for. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to watch. I will watch because I'm loyal to you guys. And um, uh, I can't wait to uh, drag it. <laughs> If it's not what we if it's not what we want it to be, I will be here to drag it uh, with you all by my side. But um, so I am I am interested to watch, uh, interested in that season and just seeing how it will play out for Becca. I hope to God that they do not bring up Ross. I really, really do because to me, he just that is that is a um, unhealthy storyline to keep going throughout this show. But I feel like they are so grimy, they will pick him as probably one of the last contestants to meet with her because uh, that's how this show does. It really, really does. And I just, for somebody who, has, who hasn't been watching it very long, I'm really, really disappointed. You know, so uh, it's unfortunate, but you know, hey, 
Beck is the new bachelorette. I hope they paid her handsomely. I hope she's getting a great check and a lot of exposure. And I hope that maybe at least this exposure and everybody uplifting her and rallying her is helping with the wounds of humiliation and uh, just heartbreak, I hope. Anyway, that's um, all of my thoughts, all of my long tangent thoughts. What do you guys think about um, the final two episodes, the finale and after the final rose? Let me know in the comment section below so we can continue the Bachelor discussion. Bye, guys.